we use the central limit theorem with proportions. Basically, we're looking at situations that are binomial situations, where you either have a yes or a no to a question. You have a make or a miss, a success or a failure. Within this framework, we're going to look at how to calculate proportions, calculate standard scores with proportions, and find probabilities from these proportions. So, any proportion in a population is given by P, that proportion of the population equals X, the number of people who have the characteristic over capital N, the number of people in the population. If I want to find an estimate of that P with a little arrow over it, I call it P hat, equals X, the number of people who have the trait, over N, the number of people in the sample. So basically, we can know from polling, for instance, if we ask 200 people who are you going to vote, vote for in Pennsylvania, we can have 150 people come back and say they're going to vote for Joe Biden for president. That would mean that our P hat is 150 over 200, or that would make it 0.75. In general, our P hat is our estimate for P, what the true proportion is in the population. When the samples are taken, our simple random samples, the conditions for a binomial distribution are met, and the sample size is large enough to ensure that NP is greater than 5 and N times 1 minus P is greater than 5, a normal distribution can be used to approximate the binomial. Basically, the mean of this normal distribution is just P. The standard deviation is the square root of P times 1 minus P over N. This formula, you definitely want to be careful and make sure everything's happening under the square root. So as you're putting it into the calculator, make sure you have enough parentheses that this last divide by N isn't happening outside of the square root. That's the most common mistake that students make on this type of problem. But basically, these formulas, we can just spit back real quickly. What's the mean of the... Of the Sampling distribution of the proportion, it's just whatever the given P is. For the sigma sub P hat, we have to do this longer calculation. Oh, just to touch on what this NP greater than 5 and N1 minus P greater than 5, greater than or equal to 5. It just means that if, for instance, I wanted to test how many people have antibodies for a certain disease. If it's a very rare disease, if I test 100 people, it's very likely nobody has the antibodies. If I want to make it so that n times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 5, it would mean if 1 in 1,000 people has it in the population, I probably need to test 5,000 people before I can call my sample size big enough. That way, I'm likely to get about 5 people within the sample who do fall into having the characteristics. Otherwise, if you just keep getting zero people with something, or zero successes, zero failures, it's really hard to quantify what the probabilities were. So these minimums here are similar to that you need at least 30 for things to start to look normal under the last unit, but we make it five basically because we're worried about rare events here. So random size samples of size n were selected from the binomial populations with population parameters p given here. Find the mean and the standard deviation, the sampling distribution, the sampling proportion p hat. Mean is really easy. The mean is just spitting back what these numbers are. So mu sub p hat for 1 is 0.55. Mu sub p hat for 2 is 0.4. And mu sub p hat for 3 is 0.29 little trickier to find the sigma sub p hat. I need to take this 0.55 times 1 minus 0.55 over 100 and put it all under the square root. So I'm going to show the calculations for that and what you should get if you were putting it correctly into your calculator. So again, I'm just copying down. Mu sub p hat is just whatever the given p is for each of these. But when I'm doing this calculation, I'm doing p times 1 minus p over n, all under the square root. I got 0 0.0497, 0 0.0693, and 0 0.0606. In each of these cases, I rounded to four decimal places. I probably did that just because I'm used to doing it from looking up things in the normal table. I'd say that as you're doing these in send gauge, try your best not to round and to keep whatever number it is 
as you're doing the division and finding the z-scores. Only round when you get to the z-score part. According to the central limit theorem, the standard score z-score for a sample proportion and a sample in distribution is given by p hat minus mu sub p hat over sigma sub p hat. Or in practice, whatever the p from our sample is, minus the given population p over the root of the population p will minus the population p over n. The key distinction here is where there's a population p versus a sample p. A lot of students end up taking this p hat that they calculate as x over n and putting it in the bottom as well. It should not go there. In bottom, we should have the p that we were given as the known proportion of the population. So, let's say we want to calculate the standard scores for the sample proportions. If I have x and n, I can use x over n to find p hat. So the first thing that I need to do is do 60 divided by 100, which gives me 0.6. Now that I have that p hat, I can do that p hat, 0.6 minus the actual p, 0.55, over the root of 0.55 times 1 minus 0.55 over 100. So basically we're using the p and n that we had from previous pages, meaning that we already know what the mean and standard deviation of the sampling distribution are. We're just now putting this into a z-score framework where we can find the z-score for each of these situations. So for the first situation, for 60 out of 100, the p hat was 0.6. We were comparing that to the given p of 0.55. So the z-score became 0.6 minus 0.55 over the root of 0.551 minus 0.55 over 100. My final answer for the z-score was 1.01. For number two, we take x over n. That's where we're getting p hat of 0.6. Then we put that in. Oh, I'm sorry, this 22 over 50 really should be 0.44, not 0.6. So I need to correct that here. But apologies, I obviously cut and paste that from above. That said, this is, should be 0 0.44, 0 0.44 minus the given p of 0.4 over the root of 0 0.41 minus 0 0.4 over 50, ended up being a z-score of 0 0.58. For the last one, p hat is 0.25, which is lower than p. It's okay to get a negative number here. It will lead you to a negative z-score like this does, and negative 0 0.66. So, if they ask me, what's the probability p hat is less than? I take the z-score I calculate on the last page, look up the given p, or the associated p-value, and that will be my answer. For number two, I'm gonna have to take the z-score that I found on the previous page, I'm going to need to do the p-value associated with it, and do one minus that, because that is a greater than question. When this is asking between 0.25 and 0.29, we already found the z-score for 0.25. If we want to find the z-score for 0.29, it's actually not so bad since this is also 0.29. Basically, that's happening right at the mean, which has a z-score of 0, 0.00 and has a p-value of 0. 0.5000. So I take the larger p-value, 0. 0.5000, minus the p-value associated with this 0.25, and that would tell me my between question, what's the chance I get a p hat between 0.29 and 0.25. Here's the math on all that. So we previously found a z-score of 1.01. For a less than problem, we just look up 1.01 in the table. In this case, the table value is 0.8483. In problem two, we previously found a z-score of 0 0.58. Again, since we have that z-score, we can use it to look up the p-value. In this case, the p-value is 0 0.7190. We can then do one minus that for a more than question to get our final answer of 0 0.2910 as the probability. For number three, we previously found the z-score of negative 0 0.66, which has a p-value of 0 0.2546. If we take the 0.29 that is the mean and gives me a z-score of 0, 0.00, we find 0 0.5000 is associated with 0 0.00. So larger p-value, 0.5000, minus smaller p-value, 0.2546, is how I get the correct final answer for the between probability, 0.2454.
A local college claims that 89% of recent graduates are employed one year after graduating. A random sample of 90 recent graduates is surveyed. What's the probability less than 85% of them are employed one year after graduating? In this case, 0.85 here is going to be our p hat. It's what we're trying to test against. So we're trying to say, what's the probability less than 85%? Well, that means I need to take 0.85 minus the mean they've been given of 0.89 divided by the whole standard deviation calculation using this 89. So the root of 0.89 times 1 minus 0.89 over 90. When I do all that, I'll get a z-score. That z-score will take me to a probability in the table that is the correct answer to a less than question. For number two, with a flower shop, we're using 32% as our p. That's what they're reporting as what proportion of their sales come from Valentine's Day. If we randomly select 70 of their sales from last year, that's going to be our n when we use it to calculate on bottom of the z-score formula, the sigma sub p hat. No more than 35% were ordered for Valentine's Day is going to be our p hat that we put into the problem. So 0.35 minus 0.32 over the root of 0.32 times 1 minus 0.32 over 70. Here's what that looks like. For the first problem, we end up with negative 0.04 over 0.033 which is a z-score of negative 1.21. Since we're looking for less than, we can use exact table values. I look up negative 1.21 in the table, and it should point me to p equals 0.1131. So the correct answer to this first problem is 0.1131. For the second problem, we do 0.35, which was the given p hat, minus 0.32, which was the given p, over the root of 0.32, 1 minus 0.32, over 70, which was the given n. That gave us a z-score of 0 0.54, which in the table points us to a p-value of 0 0.7054. Same prompts for each of these, and they're going to be on the next page as well. It's just asking a different question. So this time it's saying, what's the probability more than 90%? For more than 90%, we do 0 0.90 minus 0 0.89 over that same square root. When we find an answer, we look up the z-score in the table and do 1 minus the table value. The flower shop reports 32% of their sales, still 32 is our p, but now we're looking for no less than 30%. No less than 30% is the same thing as more than. So basically, we're going to do 0 0.30 minus 0 0.32 over the root of 0 0.321 minus 0 0.32 over 70. That's going to give us a z-score. It's going to point us to a p-value, which if we do 1 minus, we'll answer the question. So here's the top one. We get a z-score of 0 0.30, which points us to 0 0.6179. If I do 1 minus that 0 0.6179, that's how I get to the correct answer to the question, 0 0.3821. Same idea for number two. We first get our z-score of negative 0.36. The less than value would then be 0.3594. Since we want more than or no less than, we do 1 minus that to get 0.6406 as our final answer. Last type of these are asking between questions for the two things that we already found in previous slides. So we're going to look at the z-scores that we had and the p-values associated with them. Do larger p-value minus smaller. For the college claim, we previously found negative 1.21 and 0 0.30. So those pointed to 0 0.1131 and 0 0.6179. Larger minus smaller gives us our between answer of 0.5048. For number two, we previously found z of 0 0.54 and negative 0 0.36. The associated p-values are 0 0.7054 and 0.3594. When I subtract them, larger minus smaller gives me a final answer of 0 0.3460.